So what is vanillin? Vanillin is a natural crystal substance you taste in vanilla, but it's not the only ingredient in the vanilla bean. The vanillin is extracted from the seed pods of the orchid Vanilla plenifolia, and which is usually cultivated in Central America, Mexico, and Madagascar to provide the world's demand. Vanillin is one of the most important flavoring agent nowadays. It has been widely used in food products such as tea, drinks, yogurt, pavlova, ice cream, cakes, and macaroons, as well as personal products such as essential oils, health products, body washes, body scrubs, and shampoos, even cosmetic products like lipstick and moisturizers. Due to the ever-rising demand of vanillin in the 1870s, the vanilla pods can only provide less than 1% of the world's demand. Glucose and vanillin are products of the enzymatically hydrolyzed vanillin glycoside, which is a labor-intensive and time-consuming process. Thus, the synthetic vanillin approach has risen to fulfill the world's needs of vanilla. However, during the synthesis procedure, there are multiple toxic reagents used in toxic products produced. The environmental concern has induced the development of a more sustainable method to produce vanillin. Therefore, the biocatalysis method has been developed. The biocatalysis is direct converting of raw material to vanillin under certain conditions without using nasty chemicals. This video will outline the old vanillin synthesis and the new biocatalysis synthesis method discovered. Synthetic vanillin can come from either petroleum-based material or lignin-based material. 85% of the synthetic vanillin comes from petroleum and the remaining is obtained from lignin. The major commercial way to obtain the vanillin is by attaining guaiacol from phenol. The route involves the condensation of guaiacol and glyoxylic acid, followed by oxidative decarboxylation to form vanillin. The advantage of this route is the high regioselectivity. Therefore, no byproduct is produced, resulting in a high yield of vanillin. However, this synthetic route is non sustainable. Not only is petroleum a non renewable source, but also results in the release of a greenhouse gas known as carbon dioxide. The reagents used in this process, dimethyl sulfate, is also a highly toxic chemical which has been considered as a chemical weapon. Also, the hydrogen peroxide used in high concentrations is an aggressive oxidizer which may corrode human skin upon contact. Another raw material for synthetic vanillin is lignin. Lignosulfonates are produced during paper preparation. The R1 and R2 groups on the lignosulfonates represent the wide variety of functional groups attached to the lignin structure. The lignosulfonate is then depolymerized under high temperature and pressure to form lignin guaiacol G monument. The monomer is then oxidized under strong alkaline conditions to give vanillin. However, this procedure is unfavored due to the use of the expensive toxic reagent known as nitrobenzene. Also, the vanillin is hard to separate from the byproduct. Most importantly, the procedure results in a low yield of vanillin. The most sustainable method discovered for the synthesis of vanillin is a biocatalytic process where a catalyst is used to convert biological waste to vanillin. The biocatalyst used is known as methyl trioxorenium, MTO, which is a product of genetically modified E. coli. The MTO cleaves the C2C -C double bonds of biological waste such as transferulic acid from rice bran and isoeugenol from sawdust. This route can be considered as the most sustainable way to produce vanillin because the catalyst itself is non-toxic and it produces a high yield of vanillin. The reagent used in this biocatalytic process is hydrogen peroxide, which is not as toxic as dimethyl sulfate used in the petroleum-based vanillin synthesis. The other biocatalysis, carboxylic acid reductase from the pure nocardia species, can also convert vanillic acid to vanillin. These catalysts focus on converting vanillic acid to vanillin, which can also be further reduced to vanillyl alcohol known as vanilla essence, a food flavoring agent. This is done by activating the carboxyl groups of ATP to highly reactive carbonyl AMP intermediates, which are readily reduced by NADPH to aldehyde. Therefore, using the carboxylic acid reductase catalyst results in relatively high yield of vanillin and no side products produced. Most importantly, the catalyst has chemoselective, regioselective, and enantioselective properties resulting in high atom economy and high percentage yields of vanillin and vanillyl alcohol from biological waste. The natural vanillin extraction results in less than 1% of the world's demand and requires intensive labor. Synthetic roots such as lignin breakdown to obtain vanillin results in 15% of the world's demand, whilst obtaining vanillin from phenol 
petroleum-based compound results in 85% of the world's supply. These synthetic roots require the use of toxic chemicals and reagents, non-renewable feedstock, and high energy input to result in low atom economy, low yield, and undesirable side products. A biocatalytic process was discovered to generate vanillin by converting renewable resources to vanillin using MTO as the catalyst from E. coli, as well as carboxylic acid reductase from the Nocardia species. So we can continue enjoying an entire tub of vanilla ice cream on a hot summer's day without causing more environmental issues.